So, hi folks. Uh, sorry again about today, but I've got myself a new tablet and I'm going to try something a little bit different today. And I'm going to upload, I think, the lecture in three parts, but this is just the beginning of the first, so I'm, I'm not sure how that's going to work exactly yet. But uh, I also wanted to say, while it's still St. Patrick's Day, happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, we're going to be doing this problem of an electromagnetic wave incident on a boundary, um, incident on a boundary between two different materials. And those materials are going to be linear, isotropic, homogeneous um, uh, materials. And that means that they are polarizable and they become magnetized. And, uh, and there's a relationship between the magnetization and the magnetic field and a relationship between the the displacement and the electric field. And I'm just going to just this particular first um, part of the lecture is just going to be to review um, the relevant parts of, of, um, of, of Maxwell's equations expressed, taking into account some aspects of the matter that, that in, the, in the region of space we're talking about. And the first thing I wanted to point out was, of course, we have the divergence of the electric displacement. The displacement is equal to the free charge. And the displacement, and I'm going to you know, just give me a second here. This is coming. The displacement um, is equal to um, epsilon naught times the electric field plus the polarization. And you remember the divergence of the polarization is minus uh, the bound charge. And so that if I take the divergence of D, I get epsilon naught div E is equal to rho F plus rho bound. Um, and in a linear isotropic homogeneous material, well, in a linear isotropic material, I'll start with that, with, with, with that, okay, in a linear isotropic material, there's a relationship, when I say that, what I mean is there's a relationship between the electric um, field and the polarization such that the polarization is equal to epsilon naught times this uh, susceptibility times uh, the electric field. And that means the polarization is parallel to the electric field. And there's a scalar that you multiply that by, which depends upon the material itself. And so if I, it, and when I do that, what I end up with is D is equal to epsilon naught one plus the susceptibility times E. And if, it's, if the material is homogeneous, what that means is, is that is that it's it's it it's not varying as a function of location, you know. So these the, the, the this this property here, and so I can take that out of the divergence, and so what I have is the di is the divergence of E is equal to rho f over this epsilon, where epsilon is equal to epsilon naught one plus chi e. Okay, but the other thing in this material is that there's no free charges, right? And so rho free is zero. And so again, because it's a linear isotropic material, then I'm gonna end up with the divergence of E is equal to zero. Okay, and so that's one of our Maxwell's equations. And then if I go to the version of Ampere's law that we worked out before, um, I've got um, the curl of H is equal to J free plus di D di T, okay? And what I'm gonna say down here is I've got the curl of this is um, B over mu naught minus M is equal to di D di T, okay? And, and where again, D is going to be, D is equal to epsilon E. Now in this linear isotropic homogeneous material, there's a relationship between, you know, the, the idea here is that the magnetic field is parallel to the magnetization or anti-parallel and, and, and is, is therefore parallel to H as well, because H is a linear combination of the magnetic field and the magnetization. And, and so what I end up what I end up with is is a, a relationship which is this right And so what I have is then um,
p over mu naught minus m or h um, times one plus chi m is equal to b over mu naught or h is equal to b over mu where mu is equal to one plus chi m times mu naught, okay? And so then I can take this equation, this Ampere's law here, and I can write that as curl of B is equal to, and then, and then the, the mu, because, it's, because it's, a, it's a homogeneous material, mu comes out of the curl, and that's equal to zero for JF, and then I have mu di D di T, but D is epsilon E, and so I have the curl of B is equal to mu epsilon, ep, sorry, mu epsilon, not epsilon naught, di D di T, okay? And so, sorry, di E di T, di E di T, okay? Now, and so then what I have, so these, these are my four Maxwell's equations because Faraday's law is, you know, still Faraday's law and div B is equal to zero. And what I have here is, um, is I can take the curl of the curl of B, right, is equal to mu epsilon di by di T, uh, the curl of E, right? And then this is grad div E minus grad D, div B rather minus grad squared B um, is equal to mu epsilon di two by di T squared B because I've used Faraday's law in making that step of course. This is zero, right? And there's a minus sign here from Faraday's law. And then what I have then is grad squared B is equal to um, mu epsilon di to B di T squared, okay? And then similarly, if I take the curl of the curl of E is equal to minus di by di T of the curl of B. So if I take the curl of the curl of E, which is equal to minus di by di T curl of B, and then I go through the same exercise, I'm gonna end up with the same equation, but for E, grad squared E is equal to mu epsilon di to E di T squared, okay? And if I go and look, and, and so then what we have here now, this is wave equation, where V is equal to one over the square root of epsilon, mu epsilon. And here we have Again, V is equal to one over the square root of mu epsilon. And this is properly, this is, this is the phase speed. And that phase speed is, is omega over K. Okay, and that's really, you know, when we, when we look at this problem that we're gonna, that we're gonna work through now, that, you know, we're going to be using the fact that the material is a separate, the, the two different materials, region one and region two, they have different electric and magnetic properties, right? And so they're going to have a different wave speed. And so I'm going to wrap this up right now, and then I will be back in, in video number two. And so let me just do this.